This week on The Choosing. I've got a really important decision to make. I just need to do what's best for myself and my mission. Jesus? Yeah, he seems to like me a lot. Enough to give me a new name and everything, but I feel like I often do the opposite of what he wants. Even though I can obviously run the fastest, this is a solid group of guys. And running super fast might not be the most important thing to Jesus. I might be going home. Let's just say I'm skeptical about this whole thing. It all seems a little fake. A little fake? Yeah. Just kidding. I love you all. You're all chosen. Will you take up your crosses and follow me? Welcome to Catholic Central, I'm Gabby. And I'm Nick. Sometimes when we hear about saints, they seem so out of reach. Yeah, I have a long way to go. Yeah. But the Bible gives us a complete picture of flawed, ordinary human beings that Jesus chose to follow him. Today, we'll take a look at the 12 apostles and the lessons we can take from them. The 12 apostles were Jesus' closest followers during his lifetime. The term apostle comes from the Greek apostolos, which originally meant messenger or envoy. One thing to note is that none of them were scholars or rabbis. Or important at all in terms of society. And they were definitely not perfect. Who better to demonstrate demonstrate that than the man who Catholics call first among equals, Simon Peter. Now, in every list of the apostles, Peter comes first. He was also the first one called by Christ in the chronology of the Gospels. Originally named Simon, he was a married fisherman along with his brother Andrew. You might know Simon from memorable moments like, Hey, I'm walking on water. Wait, I'm walking on water. Help! <laughs> Jesus? Never heard of him. Jesus changed Simon's name to Peter when he also declared him to be the rock upon which he would build his church. Jesus makes a play on words because the word for Peter, Petros, also means rock. This is why Catholics consider Peter to be the first pope. Moving on to the next pair of brothers, or as Jesus called them, the sons of thunder. James and John were the sons of Zebedee, and Luke mentions that they worked as a team with Simon and Andrew. Both pairs immediately abandoned their nets to follow Jesus. Along with Peter, James and John witnessed the transfiguration, where Jesus became dazzling white and chatted with Moses and Elijah. John is also notable for this moment. Yeah, I suppose you could call me the disciple that Jesus loved, the, the one who beat Peter to the tomb, but still let him enter first. Now on to these crazy visions about dragons. John is often called the Beloved because the Bible refers to him as the disciple that Jesus loved. And the Revelator because he wrote the book of Revelation. Moving on to another pair, Philip and Nathaniel. Now we don't know too much about Philip, but he did give us this gem. Come on, Jesus. Just show us the Father. Just a little peek. Which gave Jesus the chance to clarify that he and the Father were one. Philip also called his good friend Nathaniel, to which Nathaniel replied, <laughs> Nazareth? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? That backwoods town. But Jesus said there was nothing false in him. So you could say he was like the OG. When he asked Jesus how he knew him, Jesus responded that he saw him under the fig tree before Philip called him. This lets us know that no matter where we are, God sees us and knows us. Next we have Matthew also called Levi. Matthew was a tax collector, who at the time were seen as villains. Mr. Christ, might I entice you to join me for a meal? The fact that Jesus dined with him raised red flags for the Pharisees. To which Jesus replied that it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. A great reminder that no one is excluded from God's love. Next up, Thomas. Jesus? Resurrected? I'm gonna need to feel those wounds for myself. Thomas went down in history as Doubting Thomas, who wouldn't accept the truth of the resurrection without seeing it for himself, which is symbolic for all of us that find ourselves with doubts from time to time. Then we have Judas Iscariot. You know him as the guy who betrayed Jesus by telling the Romans that Jesus was the dude he was gonna kiss. Even though he probably could have just pointed. Judas's story is a painful reminder of how we all betray God, ourselves and our loved ones. And how that betrayal is rarely worth it. Then we've got some mystery men. We don't know much about James the Lesser, Simon the Zealot, or Jude slash Thaddeus. But this teaches us that you can literally be unremarkable. Hey! <laughs> Sorry guys, I just call it how I see it. That's fair. 
Even if we live ordinary, normal lives, we can be called personally by Jesus. After Jesus called them, he gave them authority to cast out unclean spirits. And witness Pentecost which Catholics believe established the church. They all went far and wide and established churches. The churches they founded were later called apostolic sees. And their legacy lives on because Catholics believe that the bishops get their authority to ordain new priests directly from the unbroken link back to the apostles. Now, to sum up, if there's one thing we can learn from the story of the 12 apostles, it's that having doubts and sins doesn't mean we can't keep trying. Jesus calls them, they try, they fail. Many times they just don't get it. But even when they abandon him, he's still there. He never abandons us. For Catholic Central, I'm Gabby. And I'm Nick. Be sure to like and subscribe and let us know who your favorite apostle is below. Who said that about me? Doubting, Dom. Look, look. Maybe well-reasoned thinks for himself, Thomas. Oh, he rose from the dead. Well, okay, okay, I hear you, cool, but I kind of want to feel the wounds, put my hand inside kind of thing. Yeah, until then, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> Do your thing, just whatever, you know? When Christ says something, we, we drop everything and we go. We hustle. Hustle for Jesus. Put that on a t-shirt. <laughs>